Welcome to Trash and Cash. In this series, I fix up eBay junk to see if I can turn a profit. And in this episode, I have a Game Boy Color, but not just any Game Boy Color, it's from this big bundle that I purchased. So let's have a look and see what's actually wrong with this one. So if I remember, this one, I believe, is everything works apart from the link cable. So having a look at the battery contacts, the battery contacts are clean. And as mentioned, yep, the link cable port is definitely broken. So we'll need to replace that. That's really, really bad. Let's just make sure everything else does work. So we have power, I've got sound, and I've got something on the screen. And it's loading, the game's fine. So let's just make sure the buttons feel good. Make sure the volume wheel is changing the volume. Which does seem to be so. Seems to be our only issue is this link cable port. So let's open up this Game Boy Color. Now that all the screws are removed, let's just pry this open. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Ooh. Wow, that's bad. How is this working? No, seriously, how? That is some nasty corrosion. Looks like we're going to have a lot more work here. So looking down here, there's also some kind of corrosion down here. Not as bad. The switch, that looks pretty bad as well. So let's get this out of the case. So it looks like someone has definitely been in here before and has attempted to solder these battery contacts and they're definitely broken. And there seems to be some corrosion here. Yeah, looking at these battery contacts, that is pretty bad. So let's give this a clean up with some IPA. So that's looking a little better. I'm also going to use some flux remover to help here. So what I'm going to do is I need to make sure that all this corrosion is removed. So I'm going to touch up all the solder joints on the power switch. Now those are looking much better and are definitely corrosion free, so they won't cause an issue in the future. So now let's move on to this IC. As I feared, unfortunately it looks like while I was trying to get rid of the corrosion, one of the legs have snapped. If I didn't attempt to repair, yeah it probably would have worked for a while, but it wouldn't have worked forever. Which is a shame, because the rest of the pins are looking real good. Luckily, I do have a replacement for this, so let's just replace it. I'm going to use some hot air for this, so I'm going to protect the plastic connector that's near it. Oh, that is nasty. I mean, even if I didn't break this, it would have broken afterwards. We need to get some IPA in there. So let's flux up these pads. I'm going to prepare them, ready for the replacement IC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder down just one or two pins so it's held in place. And then I'm free to solder the rest without the worry of moving it or soldering it in the wrong place.
There we go, that is now replaced and is looking as good as new in that particular area. So looking at the bottom half, let's clean this up. So now to clean the connectors a bit better, I'm going to use a mix of contact cleaner and IPA. I do have some cut off jacks that will fit in these that I'll use to insert, disconnect and reinsert. While I'm here, I'm also going to give the speaker a quick little clean. Now that those are clean, I'm going to clean up these contacts because there's a tiny bit of battery acid near the start and select. Disgusting. So these battery contacts need to go, they need to be cleaned properly if they are salvageable. So I'm going to desolder them from the board. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Hopefully that's salvageable. So that one's a little better. That's usable. And as you can see on the board, someone has definitely been there before. Somehow, and I don't know how, I've only just noticed, the game cartridge, one of the little clips has snapped off. So a bit of super glue will fix this. Not sure when that happened. So let's test this. To test, I'm actually going to use a Pokemon Red, which I did actually fix myself. If you want to see how, you can watch in the top right. So it looks like we don't actually have any sound, so I'm going to try with my earphones. Okay, I have sound in my earphones, so that's good. That means something around the speaker has probably failed. Which, again, I'm not really surprised because there's just so much damage to this BCB, I'm surprised it worked in the first place. So while I'm here, I'm just going to quickly clean the game connector. Now looking a bit closer at the speaker, it does look like there is some corrosion on the cable, so I'm going to replace these cables with some new ones. I'm also going to give this jack a bit more of a clean, because sometimes this could be the issue. So before we move on to the next thing, let's just test it again to see if that extra cleaning helped. Okay, it's very, 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 very quiet. You might be able to hear this. Ready? Don't know if you heard that chime. It's extremely quiet, but it is coming out. So I'm actually going to replace the volume wheel. The reason why I'm going to jump to the volume wheel is because as I could see, there is definitely some corrosion here. And it would make sense, right? The volume's stuck on really low. So let's desolder this, get it replaced with a new one, clean it up with some IPA, and then retest. Looking at this connector, it would have to be replaced anyway, even if the sand was supposedly working, just because it will fail later due to all the corrosion. If this doesn't work, I still have a few more tricks up my sleeve. So now this is at a stage where I can just carefully pry this off and I'm ready to see the horrors underneath. Yeah, that is nasty. Again, how this worked for a bit, I have no idea. Having a closer look, this, this is just terrible. I'm either going to compare it for you with what a new one and what this one should look like. Look at that difference. Yeah, there is so much damage to that one. All right, let's put the new one on.
So now that it's all cleaned up, I'm just going to prepare these pads and put the new volume wheel on. A little tip and trick, with components like this that go through the board, if you actually bend the legs slightly, it will hold the component in place so you know that when you're soldering, it is soldered as close as it can be to the board itself. That way you also don't have to have a crocodile clip or a third hand to hold it in place for you. And there we go, we have the new volume mill on board, and it looks a lot better. So let's test this. Wow, no, I still don't have sound. Okay, let's move back to the speaker. So I've put in a new speaker and we still have nothing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to recap this board for the speaker and the battery power. And now to replace these two. So as you probably saw, I used some tweezers to prevent burning of the connector. So unfortunately, I had to take off the little black cap around this, because my replacement capacitor is a slightly bigger package. Now that that's done, let's give it another test. And still nothing. Okay, let's replace those speaker cables. To prepare these, I'm just going to use some wire cutters to reveal the wire, and then I'm going to add some solder to each end of these wires. This makes it easier to solder. So I'm going to be attaching the original speaker because it doesn't actually seem to be faulty. To the moment of truth, let's see if this actually works now. Hey, and it does work. I should have just replaced those speaker cables in the first place. But oh well, it's fixed. So let's actually go on to what the original fault was, and that is this connector. So unfortunately, they don't actually do direct replacements, but they do do this one, which is a Game Boy Advance link cable port. It actually has the exact same pinout and footprint, apart from it has a little notch at the top. So we'll have to modify the Game Boy color case to make this fit. So I've been struggling to try and remove the solder from these holes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reapply the solder, making solder bridges between all the pins, so I can heat them all up at the same time with just my soldering iron. Now that is finally out, the damage doesn't look too bad on the board, but I'm still going to clean it up with a bit of IPA. Definitely not as bad as the volume will. So 
So now that all those holes are cleared up of solder, let's put the new part in. There we go, that's been replaced. So let's have a quick recap. We've replaced this link connector, we've replaced the volume wheel, we've replaced the amp IC, we've touched up the power switch. We've replaced all three of these capacitors and the speaker wires. And if you haven't forgotten, we still have to yet repair the battery contacts. So let's see how those are doing. So they look a little better. Uh, unfortunately, this one is still quite damaged. I'm gonna try and clean this up with a fiberglass pen. So this is pretty much the best I can clean it up as, but as you can see, there is like this ring of good contact. So the spring will actually still make good contact, so this is still usable, although it does look pretty disgusting. So what I'm going to have to do is expose some more, make a join there, I'm probably going to put a bit of strong wire across to attach the contact to. Unfortunately, this won't be the most sturdy thing, but it will still work in theory. So let's just solder the battery contact to this fix. So there we go. The battery contacts are now in and this should be everything. Now let's get this in a case and test. So now it's crudely in a case because again, that link connector doesn't make it fit. We have power, we have sound and we have the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off where I need to modify the case to make this connector fit. So as you can see that's looking a lot better and it does look kind of natural in there, I'm not going to lie. And there's no gap between either side of the case. So let's give this case a thorough clean. To do this, I'm going to use an antiseptic wipe and a microfiber cloth. Now that the bottom half of the shell is done, let's do the exact same thing for the top half. So here is all the buttons and rubbers, pretty disgusting. And now here they are, nice and clean, if by magic. So let's now assemble this all for the final time. So to give this a final test, again I'm going to use the Pokemon Red that I've repaired. You can watch that up in the top right. To the moment of truth, I'm expecting everything to still work, and it looks like it is. Wow, considering this should have been working and the only thing wrong with it was that link connector. I'm amazed it even did work. But finally, that has been fully repaired and refurbished. So let's get on to the bit that everybody loves, the actual cost breakdown. There's obviously been a lot of work for this, yet surprisingly the bits that I have done is quite cheap. So the cost per console for this bundle was £20.71. When checking eBay sold listings, it looks like it ranges about £30 to £40, so I'm going to say I could sell this for £35. This would then make the associated fees £4.82, while the cost to repair and clean was £3.23. And then to post this, it will probably cost around £2.80, which would then leave me with a profit of £3.43, which is a small margin for the work that was involved but I'm just glad I was able to save this Game Boy 
before that corrosion really did some damage. If you've managed to make it this far and you were surprised by how much I had to fix, put in the comments below, hashtag it works.